wonderful day, our viewers out there. Welcome to the program Perspective on ITV. My name is Chuka Onghai. Perspective on ITV will look on a variety of issues, our profiling solution. Last week, I was here on the program. And of course, this week, we are back here. This week on the program, uh, we shall be examining uh, the outcome of the just concluded Osho election, where we had uh, Senator Ademola Adelike emerging as the winner of the election. With me in the studio to discuss this issue on the outcome of uh, the Osho election is no other than uh, Mr. Quincy Marklang. He's a public affairs analyst here in the FCT. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, now, let's uh, look uh, critically. Uh, at the equity elections and of course the Osho election that just went down, uh, what uh, are the differences? Uh, what, how do we relate both elections? First of all, let's get that from you, sir. Okay, yeah. You see, um, both elections that went down are peculiar in different ways. What do I mean? You see, we had internal wranglings within those parties in both states, and I think that was what cost the PDP, the election in Ekiti, thereby giving the APC an edge, you know. And this, we saw the same thing play out, you know, soon, where some kind of disagreement between the power blocks on either the, you know, the incumbent governor, Oyetola, retaining power. Some, some power blocks didn't want him to be there. And then, of course, some other power blocks wanted him there. To recontest and you know because of that the house we saw the house divided you know the house was divided and definitely you know you are going into an election and then you don't have you, there's no consensus sort of you know the feelings there's 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 a feeling of you know discontentment amongst members especially the big wigs so you should expect that the fallout of such would definitely be a probable loss at the end of the day. Uh, let's look at uh, the, uh, the, the the candidates of uh, the PDP. We mm -hmm. had uh, Ademola Adelike as the as the governor governorship uh, candidate, and of course this deputy Adulusi uh, Kola as deputy. Uh, from from the uh, take of on take on things, uh, both seems to be a Christian Christian uh, ticket. Uh, of course, uh, we know this issue on uh, the said. Uh, Muslim, Muslim ticket, and of course, having this as a Christian, Christian, Christian ticket, uh, would you say is an, it was on the edge uh, that actually gave them the uh, the, the advantage to uh, to become the the candidates of of, uh, of the elections? Well, um, you see, first of all, you must give it to the Yorubas because they are liberal religious people if you want to put it in that context you know i am not i don't have the details but of course we are being intimated that senator adeleke is from a muslim background he has some you know muslim inclination in him and also a christian inclination so i don't know for that but well if you are putting it in the context of nigeria as a whole you see there are several states several states in Nigeria that have been able to, based on popularity, based on the popularity of these candidates, they get themselves into these offices elected. But the idea of the context of Nigeria as a whole, where we have a Muslim, Muslim ticket in the APC, you see, a state is a unit of the federation which comprises of dominant, of course, within that, you know, unit, dominant religious beliefs and practices, adherence. But in the case of Nigeria, the dynamics are quite larger than you would want to, you know, equate it with that of a state. Okay, in Kaduna, Erufai had a very smooth seal, not minding the fact that there are Christians in the states. Who constitute over 50 percent of the population so we see these things play out based on your popularity i think adeleke and adewusi they, they downplayed in ocean 
religion was downplayed. That was why I was trying to say the Yorubas are quite tolerant when it comes to religious, religion, you know, affinities. You understand? Okay, so, now uh, let's look at uh, the biomoda uh, voter accreditation system, the BIVAS. Yeah. Uh, of course, relating it to, to PVC, uh, we saw the as elections were going on, uh, we saw what played out in Ekiti, played out in, in uh, Oshun. Uh, what is your take on this, on the BIVAS, and of course, uh, as it affects the elections? How do you uh, try to rate the impact of BIVAS on these particular elections also? Yeah, you know, we must give it up to INEC. In fact, we've seen that they are coming up with new and more effective methods of conducting elections. You know, so far, so good. BIVAS have come, you know, to, to see that it gives credence to this upcoming election. And, you know, the election riggers have d discovered that, look, with this system in play, rigging has been highly curtailed. So what do they do? They need to buy your vote because your vote is very, very essential now. So if you see in Oshun, in Ekiti, both parties or whoever the contenders were, were struggling to buy votes because of the effectiveness of the beaver of course we recorded some you know inactivity on the machines they were not at some point you know there were complaints here and there but you would see that it has been reduced to the barest minimum compared to what we had in the past you know so i think it's it's we're on course the beavers is a welcome idea and then it's, it's, it meets with global best practices, you know, of electioneering around the world. And I expect that as time goes on, the INEC chairman and his team, or the management of INEC, will continue to exploit, you know, these new methods to see that elections are free and fair. And that's when we can break away from this circle of poverty and slavery by your own countrymen in the name of politics you know because at the end of the day if your choice is reflected you know in who comes out to be your elected officer or whatever position that is there for you find out that your aspirations of a better nigeria are possible you know to a larger extent uh, prior to now, uh, prior to uh, Osho elections, we've had uh, on the issue as it concerns uh, uh, poli other poli new political parties uh, yeah. coming up, of course, making waves uh, so much, especially uh, in the social media and, of course, what about we have the likes of the N N NPP, we have uh, Rabi Kwankwaso as the uh, presidential candidate, and, of course, the Labour Party also, where we had uh, the uh, likes of Peter Obi coming up. But uh, looking at uh, the Osho elections, how do you tend to rate their performances there? Uh, do you say what actually happened there? Well, how did the player one expected, of course, uh, since it's a party that is gaining much ground now, so have at least come up uh, with some uh, better performances at the elections. What's your take on that? Okay, yeah. Um, like you said, this, these are new parties. They are not really new parties. It's just that they've not been dominant. You know, mm -hmm. we've always had the PDT dominant. and APC and the few dominant parties anyway. Now, NN, NNPN, New Nigerian People's, People's Party, Party NNPP, NNPP, sorry, has been in existence, you know. It's just that the gladiators that have taken over these parties are people that are big wigs. They have followers. They have followership. Look at New Nigerian People's Party. You can see what Konkoso has done by moving to that party. Mm. Almost in, in my, in my by, by by regular permutations, almost half of the northern voting population, the Connaught, have been taken to that party, which were of course sympathetic to either PDP or APC, because when you look at Kwankwaso, the Kwankwasia is a movement. It's not just it's a serious movement. Now, we have the likes of His Excellency Peter Obi in the Labour Party, 
Mm. He has also given credence to this party. Just like Kwankwasa has done to the NNPP. You see, the, the good thing about it is that there is a political reawakening. And people who were, you know, hated to, non-concerned about elections, people, young people, most especially, who tell you that their votes don't count, you see that with the emergence of um, His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi and Kwankwa, so people are rushing everywhere to go and get their PVCs. Because there's a ray of hope that, look, we cannot just keep being in the... That we cannot just just be left with two parties, either the PDP or the APC. Now we have there's more diversity, there's more political diversity yeah. with these people, and and we've seen a serious political reawakening with their presence in these parties. So I, I expect that we expect that the elections this time will be quite dynamic, because the votes will not just go to one person or the other as it's usually been all this while, you know. We now see a situation where there is going to be a serious, you know, balkanization of these votes because we have gladiators all over. Uh, but but uh, I'm, I'm looking at the state, uh, the election that just went down at Osho. Uh, would you see more, uh, much impact of those uh, these political parties? Is it because of, uh, we really say uh, it's, it's the parties, it's their, their, their structures is based on, um, on a national, on a federal stand uh, rather than being in the state because what we saw at the state level saw just the uh BD, the pdp and the apc are actually claiming most of much most of the uh the the votes taking most of the electorate so i, I, I tend to find out uh, what really went down as it concerns that now. okay okay if we are looking at if we want to make comparisons with what went down in oshun and ekiti you need to understand also that these the political contenders are quite popular people. They have followership, irrespective of the parties they are in. For a, for a um, Buiga, His Excellency Buiga Oyatala, you know, in some quarters, people don't really see him as a very vibrant politician. You know, some people have argued that, you know, it's just possibly the idea of the normal Nigerian system where you want your godson to be there and that's why he was there. Yeah. And there are also claims also by Senator Adeliki that he won the previous election. You know, they went to court, they contested these things. So, point is, there has been these gladiators that are on these platforms called the PDP and APC. They, they have been people who have large followership. Is not just because of the party. I mean, Senator Adeleke has won election as a senator. It is even in some quarters that he won the election, which one way or the other was given to this current governor who he defeated. Mm. Same thing in, in um, Ekiti. You see, but the point remains that you see, Labour Party and NNPP are just gaining relevance and credence with the emergence of their presidential aspirants. That's what's just giving them credence. And if you look at it now, it's not as if some of the contenders on these platforms in the States have that at that high profile, you know, are not really having that kind of high profile like the gladiators who are contesting for the, their presidential candidates. Okay. You know, so that makes the difference, I think. Uh, like we saw uh, David Adeleke, uh, aka David Doe, yeah. uh, com coming up on the election. Of course, uh, people uh, with what is on ground have said that uh, it had so much impact, input in the election. Uh, what's your take on uh, an, an entertainer uh, having grounds in politics? How do you relate it? Yeah, well, um, you have to give it up to him. You can't take that away from him. Why do I say so? David is not the first entertainer that is delving into politics and is creating impact. We have the likes of those guys in Lagos. Um, what do you call them? Banky W and okay. the other guys whom have also... The video guys. Yeah, that, that actor too. You know? And they've made waves. You know, now, most of the voting population are youths. Mm. 
Davido is a war cluster. Mm. Whether you like it or not, you can't just help but to love him. Because music alone is, of course, is the food of the soul, you know. So he has a way to get to you. And of course, so how, do gets, how do you relate it with politics now? Davido, Davido's um, involvement in his uncle's, you know, electioneering campaign was very impactful. Because, you know, what it takes for locals to have a superstar, a war cluster in their midst, you know, it gives them a sense of belonging, a sense of belonging. And look, this is somebody that has gone around the world. He's here. We are hugging and shaking and throwing banters and each other, you know. He, he, Davido was actually, he, con he condensed so low to the level that he was climbing Okada. You saw him riding Okada in the town. It was on, on you know, online on various platforms. I, I think that was during the celebration, though. Mm -hmm. But he was actively involved. And, of course, are there ever political rallies without musicians? They are the ones that make the rally be what it is. So his presence, actually created an impact it, it was an added advantage for his uncle you know you know he actually tried in creating awareness uh, let's look at uh, uh, the upcoming the lagos uh, state election we are seeing uh, funka akindele that uh, uh, you know funka akindele uh, coming up as the deputy uh, governor for pdp would you think that will also give uh, uh, much influence to the party as it concerns the lagos elections well I think the drafters of that combination have their reasons, you know. Mm. And they are trying to, in their own wisdom, balance, you know, get someone from an influential side, from both sides. Like, you know, you are from Northwest or from the Northern side, this from the um, Western side. Funke at Kindele has been, you know, reckon to have a like a big family from where she comes from you know her family is well respected and you know the robots don't play with tradition i think she comes from a royal family or something of sort so what am i trying to say they had to bring somebody from her own constituency and they are looking for a youthful person well i think in their own wisdom they decided that or they felt that she could you know, mobilize votes for them. Because, of course, you know, elections is all about winning. You know, you go into an election because you want to win, not because you are just there. So I think it's part of their strategy to see that they get this election. And Jando might have seen that she will have the sympathy of the women, she will have the sympathy of the youths, she will have the sympathy of the elders of our constituency, owing to the fact that she's coming from, you know, um, a traditional royal home. Let's look at the issue of Godfatherism the, in these uh, the concluded elections. Uh, people thought uh, the likes of having uh, Jagaban and Ashwadu Ahmed Tunubu uh, behind uh, uh, the, the APC, you know, show where he comes from also, uh, would have made much impact. So what is your take on the issue of Godfatherism in our politics? How do you... Well, well um, I think the... The idea of God for in, in Nigerian politics is gradually coming to an end. Mm. And I'm not just talking about, or I'm not making reference even to the Ekiti election. You see, the, sorry, to the Osun election, where, where the APC lost, irrespective of the fact that the Godfather, Siwaju, was there, that the leader of the party, and so many other people. What am I trying to say? Popularity of Senator Adeliki in Oshun, in Ede and surrounding parts of that place, supersedes the influence of Godfather. Exactly. That's my point. It supersedes the influence of Godfather coming in from another place. And it was also argued that if you put Senator Adeliki side by side with Oyetola, Adeliki seems to be highly favored by, you know, the people of that um, of Oshun. So in this case, the issue of Godfather, Godfatherism is irrelevant. We saw that it was irrelevant in that whole exercise. And moving forward, 
I strongly believe that in the upcoming general elections, Nigerians are going to be so conscious to their future that the issues of Godfatherism will be downplayed. And we've already seen it happening in various states, cut across the country. So many, so many godsons and their godfathers have been at loggerheads. So we are trying, we, we, we believe that we are coming to the end of that era of godfatherism in Nigerian politics. Now, your last word, let's look at, at the issue of the youth and, of course, the uh, permanent voters uh, card. Uh, what's your advice for youth and, of course, uh, how do we, uh, what's your stick as it concerns uh, uh, the coming elections also? You know, um, it's really um, a thing of joy if you discover that with these current um, general elections that are upcoming, Nigerian youth whom he tied to have been relegated. You know, I think they did that to themselves though, have gradually and suddenly woken up. The polity itself, the what you have on ground, the realities on ground, the hard facts. You know, when you look at our GDP right from Obasanjo, when we started this democracy, up till now, you discover that the index shows that this is the worst times for this country. Whether we like it or not, I, I, could, I could say it because it's true. When you look at the GDP, we have those ratings, this is the worst. Right from Osobanjo, we've never gone into a minus, but we went into a minus this time around. Now, what am I trying to say? These things has the adverse effects. These youths are facing them on the streets. People are hungry. So definitely, we've seen an upsurge in, you know, voter registration. And we want to, I want to also commend the youths that they should try as much as possible, encourage each other, and try and see that we get these PVCs. So that in the end, we'll have a leadership installed based on our wishes. Not because one godfather somewhere said they have to win this election. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Maclang. Well, uh, viewers at home, of course, I've been with uh, Mr. Quincy uh, Maclang. Of course, he's a public affairs analyst here in the FC, And, of course, we'll be looking at the outcome of the just concluded or show elections. But the program is Perspective on ITV. And, of course, uh, my name is Chu Kaunguhai. Join me same time next week on the program. Until then, it's bye for now.